In all our grief and fear, we turn to you. O oh God, you know all that we think or do. You know the pain we put each other through. Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy. Lord, grant us peace. to put aside the angry word, the clenching fist, the wish and will to hurt. Teach us the way in which love is best served. Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord. Grant us peace. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, grant us peace. You did not even spare your only son. He lived our griefs and bore all evil done. But through his cross, redemption was begun. Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy. Grant us peace. Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy. Lord, grant us In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and prepare for the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Let us pray. O God, who have commanded us to listen to your beloved Son, be pleased, we pray, to nourish us inwardly by your word, that with spiritual sight made pure, 
we may rejoice to behold your glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord said to Abram, go forth from the land of your king's folks and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation and I will bless you. I will make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you and the communities of the earth shall find blessing in you. Abram went as the Lord directed him. The word of the Lord. reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, bear your share of hardship for the gospel with strength that comes from God. He saved us and call, called us to a holy life, not according to our works, but according to his own design and the grace bestowed on us in Christ Jesus before time began, but now made manifest through the appearance of our Savior Jesus Christ, who destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
From the shining cloud, the Father's voice is heard. This is my beloved Son, hear him. Glory to you, O Word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus took Peter, James, and John, his brother, and led them up a high mountain by themselves, and he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, his clothes became white as the light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, conversing with him. And then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Lord, it is good that we are here. If you wish, I will make three tents here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. And while he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud cast a shadow over them. And then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. And when the disciples heard this, they fell prostrate and were very much afraid. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Rise and do not be afraid. And when the disciples raised their eyes, they saw no one else but Jesus alone. As they were coming down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, do not tell the vision to anyone until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. And Abram went as the Lord had directed him. Despite the fact that he was advanced in years as was his wife, promised that he would be the father of a host of nations. Fearful, probably confused. Everything not laid clearly out so that one without hesitation and without even the need to trust could step forward. But Abram went as the Lord directed him. We saw from last Sunday's selection from Genesis, the trouble is when we don't take action upon the Lord's direction. The solution is when we do. We saw the disobedience and all that came into the world we see the obedience, the leap of trust in Abram. The disciples would have much to rock their faith, much to set them at odds in the upcoming passion and death of their Lord. And today we see that Jesus leads them up the high mountain and there is transfigured before their eyes, giving them something for a moment that could linger in their hearts when nothing externally could get them beyond the pain. That glimpse of glory, that indeed they would rejoice in that. Hence, Jesus says, you don't say a word until the Son of Man rises from the dead. This isn't what happens when you're a disciple. It's all gonna be glory. Don't say a word until you see the whole process. And then indeed, they would say more than a word. We would see Peter, who would comment very clearly. We did not follow cleverly concocted myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord but we had experienced and been eyewitnesses of his majesty, the voice who declared him to be. In the Gospel of John, 
After experiencing the death and resurrection of the Lord, the evangelist would write, we have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. The Catechism of the Catholic Church reminds us, brothers and sisters, that Christ's transfiguration aims at strengthening the apostles' faith in anticipation of his passion. The ascent onto the high mountain, Tabor, prepares them for the ascent to Calvary. And Peter and John would proclaim, would tell, but only in the light of the fulfillment. In our own lives, our own hope is kindled when we recognize the mountaintop moments that God gives us. When we are suffering, when we're going through something that takes a lot of work, I think we have to admit that few things help us endure suffering like knowing that something good awaits us on the other side. Whether that's just in a little thing, all the work we have to put into a preparation for an event, because we've had the experience of how good it is. And so we'll do it all. We'll do it with great zeal because we know something's coming. Well, brothers and sisters, that's what the transfiguration is to remind us. For all the good things we can experience, or oh, when we're popular, or when it goes our way, or when we get it. But ultimately, it's eternal life. And as for Jesus, they would discover so for us, death comes first. Suffering is a part of life. And yet our hope is kindled when we realize in those moments of suffering that it doesn't end there. Peter doesn't want this gaze to end. He wants to freeze it, if you will. We try to make eternal what is only temporary and we act as though we can. Think of how many times we want to keep something the way it is, and we do all we can to grasp it, only to have it slip through our fingers. Indeed, Peter and John would know from their own background of faith these places of encounter with the divine. But Jesus ignores their offer to correct to build these tents because his presence was not to only be in the isolated place at the isolated time, the commemoration, but rather he comes down the mountain with them. And by his presence with them, whether it be marred beyond recognition in carrying his cross, or whether it be as he passes through the door, on the evening of the first day of the week, even when it was locked. They would not look back and say, we gotta go up that mountain, Jesus is there. But he comes down and is here. He's here at the hospital bed. He's here when we're suffering. He's here when we stand overwhelmed at the grave of a loved one. He's not in an isolated moment, but those glory moments in our life are what help us to muster the hope. We have to be careful not to make an idol out of the good seasons of our lives. We tend to do that. Those seasons, those graces, are what help us endure when inevitably the cross comes. And so, brothers and sisters, if we are with him, it is all the same. Whether we find ourselves surrounded by the greatest consolation in the world, or in a hospital bed, suffering indescribable pain, or lingering by the grave of a loved one, we have value, we have hope, because of the one who is the fulfillment of all the law and the prophets said, who accompanies us on our journey through life. We are reminded of it poignantly when we pray the stations and find eerie similarities. And we don't only identify with what seems to be overwhelming, 
but in the end we identify with the glory that is not a moment on a mountain, but is abiding forever in eternity. And the foretaste and promise of that glory that never ends here in the center of our church in the tabernacle, when one makes the station and moves from the 14th of his burial, there is no station of the 15th, for it is nothing less than the presence of the Lord among us that strengthens us for the journey. As we move through life, we seek to be as Abram, not always trying to figure it out, but always trying to be responsive, obedient. We ask God not to bless what we do, but we seek to do what God blesses. And so we all have, if we pause and think about it, our Tabor top moments, when we felt the nearness of God, when we knew the miracle of life, when we wondered how we ever made it through that, except for pure grace. No, we can't freeze those forever. But as Jesus wanted Peter and John to do, we need to hold them when they will be all that gives us hope. St. John Berkman once said, our true worth does not consist in what the world thinks of us. What we really are consists in what God knows us to be. Not what the world thinks, not how it appears at the moment. And so with us, it is not when all around us would be defined by us and others as a blessing, but when we can honestly see that when we walk in a valley of evil and death, we, not, we do not need to fear it. For as he accompanied them down the mountain, so he accompanies us, giving us a glimpse of that time when we will ascend the mountain of the Lord for all eternity. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit who was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen knowing his abiding presence with us in all of the journeys of life, we turn to him with confidence. For our Holy Father, our Bishop, our Pastor, and all who preach and teach in the Church, may their words and witness be a point of encounter with Jesus for all who are searching. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the ability to keep our eyes on Jesus, who reveals himself in our mountaintop moments and can bring us through the struggles and sinfulness as we prepare and walk the journey each day. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our catechumen and candidates in the RCIA process, may their Lenten journey toward the Easter sacraments be marked with profound gratitude for God's call in their life and deep awareness of his mercy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for the grace to remain faithful in our Lenten resolve, to pray more fervently, embrace penance more willingly, and undertake almsgiving with generosity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the needs of one another and for eternal rest and peace for Eric Holding, for whom this Mass is offered, and for all who have gone before us in death, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We ask all in the confidence of faith through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join in singing song number 131, the Transfiguration, song number 131. Pray, brethren, my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, cleanse us of our faults and sanctify your faithful in body and mind for the celebration of the Paschal fest festivities through Christ our Lord. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ the Lord. For after he had told his disciples of his coming death, on the holy mountains he manifested to them his glory, to show even by the testimony of the law and the prophets that the passion leads to the glory of the resurrection. And so, with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty, without end we acclaim. beginning are ceaselessly at work so that the human race may become holy just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray upon your people's offerings. Pour out on them the power of your spirit that they become the body and blood of your beloved son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and your daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of the covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. And as he ate with them, he took bread, giving you thanks, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine and giving you thanks, he handed the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <laughs> the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, 
therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead, and looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into the one body of Christ who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop. Help us work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. And then, freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. We offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Would you please join in singing song number 491, O Lord, I Am Not Worthy, song number 491. church tonight in the racks between the doors are the Easter offering envelopes. If you'd like to enroll deceased loved ones to be remembered in the masses of Easter, details are in the bulletin, envelopes at the door. There's also some colorful flyers about Easter food baskets. This is a wonderful teaching tool for fam families with young children, and then they're brought on Holy Saturday to the Lord's tomb for blessing. So we invite families and everyone to take one of the flyers from the rack about Easter food baskets and take part in this beautiful ancient tradition. Lent is off to a wonderful start. I enjoyed last Monday night with those of you who were able to participate in our adult enrichment program. Brenda enjoyed Tuesday morning. We continue every week as in the bulletin and you're invited to any or all of them. Also the full schedule of evening mass, morning mass, adoration, confessions, stations of the cross, all of those things are outlined. But I remind you, next Sunday we begin Lent and Lamentations. This is a very unique devotion here in New England that has disappeared almost every place and uh, people travel distances to come here to be with our community for it. From 6 to 6.30 p.m., 
Next Sunday and the following two Sundays, we reflect on the passion of the Lord in soul-stirring somber song with a brief meditation in the presence of the Eucharistic Lord, and it concludes with benediction. You'll notice the announcement in the bulletin reminding you that the Blessed Sacrament's exposed a little early if you want to come for some quiet personal time, and it remains exposed after so that you can linger. I also hear confessions at both times as I hear confessions every single day in Lent. So we urge you, if those so many in community who've discovered this, it wouldn't be Lent if they didn't mark out Lenten Lamentations. They know what I'm talking about. If you have yet to, plan to join us the next three Sundays, beginning next week, 6 to 6.30, Lenten Lamentations. More is on that in the bulletin. Gentlemen, don't forget the men's retreat is next Saturday. Wednesday is the deadline to register, and that's in the bulletin as well. The women's retreat morning is the following Saturday, the 21st, and that link and as well as deadline is coming up. So the 14th for men, the 21st for women, and 9 to noon, both days in our parish center. There's an entire page in the last page of the bulletin of various reflections and thoughts that Seminarian Joe and I share. Every day uh, we post a parish uh, Facebook post that gives a meditation. And very often, Seminarian Joe does the same on his personal Facebook account and has been doing it for years. And so uh, we invite you to, to follow those, to use them as daily meditations. Uh, but for those who do not, we occasionally place some of them uh, in the bulletin. And the last page of the bulletin has those uh, there today. So everything else is in the bulletin. Read it carefully. I want to thank certainly everyone who has been a part of the capital campaign those who most recently are pushing us over the top and beyond in the column in the bulletin about the campaign update i give you more information about all that and i urge the participation of everyone in community as we surpass the goal to be able to make the additional funds necessary to be able to do the complete restoration efforts we have in mind in the coming weeks, we'll be seeing all kinds of things that are now in final stages regarding restoration uh, and various other things. For now, with the demolition, there is a, a butters meeting this coming Wednesday for all of our immediate neighbors to give them the schedule and outline um, of what will be going on. Uh, city officials will be here for that. And then shortly after that, the actual demolition of the building um, will begin. So by the end of this month, uh, we'll be ready to then move forward with the site work and the repurposing. So I thank so many. This would not be possible. First of all, without prayer, that the Lord bless our efforts, and he's done it beyond any expectation. Secondly, I want to thank those uh, who have invested so much of their time and talent and of themselves. None of this would be possible, or I wouldn't still be the pastor doing it if it weren't for the tremendous support and gifts of those people. And when this is all over, we're going to make sure um, that we celebrate them fully. But for now, continue to lift it in prayer. If you've yet to invest in our future full of hope, please do so. And let us continue to ask the Lord to grace us all with the blessing of Holy Lent, to know mercy more powerfully, that we might show mercy more completely. Let us pray. As we receive these glorious mysteries, we make thanksgiving to you, O Lord, for allowing us, while still on earth, to be partakers even now of the things of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Bow down for the blessing. Bless your faithful, we pray, O Lord, with a blessing that endures forever. Keep them faithful to the gospel of your only begotten Son, so that they may always desire and at last attain that glory whose beauty he showed in his own body to the amazement of his apostles. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Please join us as we go forth to song number 654, Loving and Forgiving, song number 654. Oh, 
bless the holy name of God. All my being, bless the Lord.